Hello, welcome back to this little festive mini-series. Uh, episode 1 should be somewhere above me if you want to catch up. But let me bring you up to speed. We are looking at four starter stroke gift sets. They must be branded as such from four different manufacturers. They've all been bought from different places. They are all a mix of subjects rather than all being cars or all being ships, for example. They're all made following the instructions as precisely as possible, ignoring the experience that I've built up knowing that I prefer building something in a certain order, for example. They use basic tools only, so no airbrush, for <laughs> the obvious one, uh, no fine sanding sticks or anything like that. And where possible, they are made using only the parts included. However, if there are things mentioned that are missing, I will add those in as and when, and obviously fully disclose that I am doing so. The core qualifying rules should appear on screen now. They must be available in 2023, and in fact all four of these were bought this year. They must include paint, stroke glue, stroke cement, whatever you want to call it. And the value cannot exceed £20, as I feel that that is a reasonable amount to assume somebody new to the hobby would be prepared to spend. So join me for this video where I will be unboxing, building, reviewing, and then marking our second entrant. And if you are watching when this video is released or near enough, then please stay tuned next week for the next instalment. I've already mentioned the previous instalment is available and there will be a playlist of all four videos as well. So if you are watching after the video has been released, you can binge to your heart's content by just viewing the playlist. So grab some eggnog and let's go. Well, kit number two comes all the way from Hella, and it is this 143rd Citroen 2CV. The prices that I have put here indicate the recommended retail price as per the Hella website, and the price that I actually paid for it on eBay. I was unable to buy this from any local model shop or any of the normal retailers I go for, so I opted for an eBay seller. The rest of the information is as presented on the box, which is here. 21 pieces, 143rd scale, gives you the dimensions as well. And of course, being a starter set version, it includes paints, as indicated by the sticker. The same kit is available without the paints for those that like it. And way down there is actually where it tells you what it is, Citroen 2CV, on the artwork. We have a big EU flag because it is a German French collaborative kit your usual sort of information you've got some history on one side you've got the, the general spiel don't stick it where you shouldn't stick it spiel on on uh, one side and the ends just contain the image of the car and of course here are the dimensions as already mentioned on the front apologies for the fact that it's creased but it was sent to me in a jiffy bag and it seems to have been a little bit crushed and uh, the sticker on there actually shows that it's the starter set version as well, so both on the front and the end. The back has a bit of history about the actual vehicle. It shows you the decal sheet that you are going to get inside, and it also tells you down at the bottom there that the tooling dates back to 1982. We also have this long list of recommended paints. Now, nowhere on the box does it say how many paints are included in this, but uh, I would be surprised if it were that many. Opening up, the first thing I can see is it's quite a nice um, foldable top box. So you're not going to lose the top of the box. You can fold it, you can keep it all in one place and use it for storage should you wish. We are also greeted by this aviation catalogue. Now, I really like the inclusion of a little catalogue in this kit. Assuming that the kit is marketed towards beginners and introducing them to a mini catalogue in a box seems like a logical choice. Although, why is it the aviation catalogue and not, I don't know, the car catalogue? Sealed in a little plastic bag are the clear parts. Looks like there are three in there. We'll assess that when we're actually building the kit itself. Uh, the paint then, right, we have number 64, which is a light grey. Number 85, which is black. And number 40, which is pale grey gloss. No other colours, so that recommendation of all of that long, great list of things clearly is uh, not something you can make straight out the box. And we have the Humbrol bin filler. Hella used to be associated with Humbrol along with Airfix years ago, and clearly they still have their cement supplied by them. The plastic parts themselves are not sealed in a bag. They are just loose in the box. We have the actual body of the car here, which is on its own little sprue tree. Uh, it doesn't appear to be any flash. It looks to be reasonably well detailed. Certainly 
quite impressed so far, bearing in mind, of course, this tooling is from 1982, if the box is to be believed. And then there is just one other sprue of parts, which is obviously everything else. So we have the floor, we have some seats, there's a steering wheel at the top left. You've got some wheels on the top right and some sort of interior part on the other corner. Uh, again, not really any flash. They look to be quite nicely moulded. Definitely a pleasant surprise for the age of the kit. And the paintbrushes here. The bristles feel absolutely fine. I mean, again, it's difficult to really rate a paintbrush as long as it physically paints. Um, looks to be the right sort of thickness, but we will wait and see. And then we have some paperwork down at the bottom. This is a very large, double-sided, extended sheet of practically nothing. It is multi-language general advice for not doing silly things with it. Don't stick it to yourself, don't sniff all the glue, and then a little um, code, QR code thing at the bottom for the instructions, which actually was also available on the box. Very impressed with that. Um, obviously, they should supply it anyway. The main instructions themselves, again, have all the historical information that you've already seen on the box. On the left-hand side, this long list of paints, as per the back of the box, are on the top. And then it's just exploded diagrams of assembling the kit. Seems fairly simple, and it tells you at every step what paint you're going to need, whether you're gluing, whether you're placing. Actually, very impressed. And the um, painting instructions are on the back and are bigger than the actual car itself, as you see there. Finally then, right at the bottom of the box, is the decal sheet itself. There are just three, which are vehicle registrations for the front and the back split in two. As you can see, they are branded Hella, so presumably they print them themselves. And they look fine. I mean, we'll see what they're like when we actually put them on, but they seem fine. All in all, this is what you get inside the box. And yeah, so far, I am pleasantly surprised. So straight up, I have a confession to make. I don't follow the instructions as accurately as I had originally intended on this. Uh, I am not familiar with making cars, as I've said. Um, slight problem, I say problem, something with the kit is what the rear axle on one side was a little bit bendy is probably the best word. It wasn't hanging off it hadn't been cut off or anything but it looked a bit fragile and i felt that sticking wheels on it straight away would probably be a bit of a pain um they are not meant to be glued on they're meant to be placed on and it's easier to paint them just on a stick as you will see later therefore even though i glue the front and back of the wheels together as seen here I don't actually put them on the car until much later as you will see so I managed to break my own rule very near the beginning. This part was bowed as you can see here it is supposed to be a flat base however it is very very twisted. This turned out to not be a problem because ultimately it is glued to the uh, the bottom the actual chassis of the car and it straightened out as part of doing so but a little bit off putting not the best quality if I'm honest. Still, the rear seats are glued onto this part, uh, just again using the poly cement straight out of the tube. Not something I would normally recommend, but hey, part of the challenge is to use what is provided. And at the other end is the dashboard. It's a rather interestingly shaped piece, looks very complicated, however doesn't really have any detail, so it seems like a bit of a waste of time that they've moulded that the way they have, but never mind. And then the entire top piece and bottom piece are glued together, as you see here. There was plenty of poly cement supplied here and a lot of pressure. Ultimately, I just had to keep holding it for a while until it straightened itself out. And when I was happy with that, I put a weight on top of it, but did that off camera. And now, earlier than planned, I present to you what is clearly becoming a regular feature. Oh boy, it is rant time. As I've already stated, there are eight paints listed as recommended for this kit. They are on the top and they are also on the box, so, you know, good. Well done for telling me what you're going to need. Look, all these wonderful colours, although to be fair, two of them are actually black, so I would argue you only need seven. Now, 
let's observe where it tells you to put certain colors right five is where the wheels are five is also the interior boot space number 40 is the dashboard number five is also showing as the interior of the wheel arches the interior is showing a 64 but again the outside is all number five basically the body color of the car is number five so if that's the case where is it black makes perfect sense i get it number 64 for the interior i understand but number 40 why have they supplied number 40 where is the exterior color where is number five well number 40 is only on the dashboard inside and out just why I actually suspect that the instructions maybe are wrong and number 40 is meant to be the exterior colour or in the past number 5 has been an exterior colour and they've changed it. Honestly, I don't understand. Why would you end up with a glossy light grey dashboard and not bother supplying an exterior colour uh, for the car? Honestly, couldn't tell you. Either way, anyway, I was slightly off track because I'm angry. Um, we're trying the paint. We've got this black in this screw top pot. Uh, it's a little thick however it didn't need any thinning but you did see there that the paintbrush has somewhat skewed it's got a, a stray brush so uh, a little bit inconvenient uh, however that's entirely down to it not having a little protector with um uh, with the way it was shipped um anyway with the black on number 64 is also painted as an interior color as i said so this is another part where I actually broke from the instructions. I painted the interior itself, as in the body, the sides and the roof. Um, also, this one was really full. Look at this. Like, it's it's just... Uh, the black made sense. It was kind of just underneath where the screw was. But the grey is right to the top. And again, this is an interior colour. This isn't even a main body colour. But they give you this insane amount. The actual quality, though, I think it took two coats of grey to get a nice covering, but you'd kind of expect that. You wouldn't uh, supply a, a paint that you put just one coat and you've com made it completely opaque. But, um, yeah, the actual quality of the paint itself, very pleasantly surprised. Um, also, the uh, the canvas top on the Citroen 2CV is grey as well. Uh, at this point, I was essentially abridging the construction so that I could make it easier for myself. I actually remember doing this when I was younger anyway, so I don't think it's that big an issue. But either way, the grey goes on. And, yeah, the paints so far, the two that I've tried, get a good so thumbs up. Oh, also, the dashboard I painted number 64 rather than number 40 because, well, it's an interior colour and I'm using number 40 as the exterior colour. Whether that's what it's meant to be or not, they've given me a paint, I'm going to be using it. And it needs an exterior colour and it would be wrong for me to then have to source my own exterior colour for the kit. So, uh, this one, number 40, very, very thick and gloopy and is only about half full. So they've given you a pot and a half's worth of 64 and half a part's worth of 40 so not really sure what Heller's uh, paint quality control is like it's, yeah a little bit interesting the actual paint itself it's it's not the best but I think that's because it's a, a thick glossy paint anyway so very quickly it becomes a bit tacky and uh, for the top coat I didn't thin it at all um, sorry, the first of the top coats, I didn't thin it at all, and um, generally speaking, you'd want to add a primer. The only reason I didn't add a primer is because the kit doesn't tell you to add a primer. If I were making this in some sort of hybrid, so using what's supplied in the kit, but not necessarily doing it as just a starter set, I would have painted the entire thing 64 and then gone over it with the top coat number 40. Um, anyway, Slight tangent aside, all that remains now is to basically assemble the various components that we've made. So the steering wheel goes onto the steering arm, is that what you call it? The, the stick thing that the steering wheel goes on, making sure to keep the little indicator control stick on the right hand side. It's a little bit weird for me driving a British car that has uh, right hand drive and the stick on the left hand side, but you know, hey, it's what the instructions told me to do. Uh, the front seats can then be squeezed carefully in. This actually is per the instructions. Yes, I painted it at a different time, but the actual assembly is in the right order. Uh, from there, the stick could essentially be held, or the steering column could be held in place until it was more or less dry. The tyres were then painted black, which is using a wooden stick and just very slowly turning. So it, it's a kind of cheaty way of doing it. Um, well, I say cheaty, I mean, I'm just using the tools that I've got. 
could also use a file or a toothpick or something like that. Um, ideally, I'd have actually used a smaller brush and I would have tidied it up a bit more as well. I, I kind of, having seen the paint finish on the body at this point, I knew it was never going to be a high quality model and I was just making do with what I could. We are now moving on to the only paint that I used. Well, okay, two paints that I used that are not included in the kit. Um, it obviously has eight, as I said, although I would argue that seven are necessary because two of them are black. However, I did feel that it was important to add some silver. So this Tamiya X11 acrylic silver or chrome silver was used. The Hella paintbrush is still being used to apply it, however, and these go on the back of the seat, something which I can only imagine acts as an inverse airbag should a collision occur. The door handles, both front and rear, left and right, the filler cap on the right hand side as well and the bumpers of course now the front bumper is part of the sh uh, chassis molding uh, that part and the rear bumper is part of the body so i nearly forgot to paint the front bumper but hey got there in the end and the radiator grill was also painted uh, again i i would have liked this to have looked a little bit nicer but the the definition here was certainly lacking and this is the part of the kit i think that shows its age the most it was at this late stage of the build that i decided to put the wheels on they are listed as not being glued in presumably so that they can still turn although having pressed them on they uh, they definitely don't turn but uh, with a little bit of pressure they did sit on quite nicely there was also a slight sloppy bit of black on one of them so i just made sure that it was at the back and it was up uh, the three decals were then dunked in warm water and slowly slid onto the model the one at the front was nice and easy just with some tweezers the one at the back i say one at the back the two at the back needed a little bit more precision so i used again the stick making sure of course that there was no paint on it from using it with the wheels that can then be dabbed with a handkerchief or cotton wool bud or something. The second of the paints that are not included is this gloss varnish. This is not a necessary step. Gloss varnish will keep the decals in place and it will give a uniform uh, sheen to the car. I used it for anything which was number 40 grey but not number 64 to get that contrast. Uh, it's just something that I prefer doing on my models. And then the interior glazing could be put in. Uh, it's quite thick. It's got some detail on the front. It's got a little wing mirror and windscreen wipers. And on the driver's, uh, sorry, the front windows, both driver and passenger side, it's got a ridge which clearly shows where the droppable window would be. It doesn't tell you to apply paint to that. Again, if this were a more precise finish, then I probably would have just added a, a small string of silver just to replicate the uh, uh, all of the detail. Well, I suppose black for the windscreen wipers. Uh, the body could then be glued on. The body could actually be press fitted on and I think you'd get away with it, however I chose to glue it. Now eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that one of the headlamps was not on the sprue during the unboxing. There are two clear parts so they're both fine but there is only one actual mounting. I toyed with the idea of trying to replace it with something however I'm making this out of the box. That was one of my strict rules, I'm going to try and make this as simply as possible out of the box and therefore the car's only going to have one headlight yeah it's going to look a bit weird um maybe it's in the garage for repair maybe um i don't know i did check the box i checked the floor and i went back and checked the footage there was no point that i could see this fell out because of me i genuinely think it was missing from the kit okay grand reveal and scores are coming up shortly however just a very quick link to my channel members who help support the channel with a monthly donation feel free to join them if you can if not just like and subscribe that is all that you really need to do well watching is actually probably the best thing you can do but either way liking subscribing and uh, becoming a channel member is an option if you wish Well, I personally feel that the end result is decidedly mediocre, predominantly because of the paint finish. The actual kit was fine to assemble, however, yeah, the, the paint does let it down. But we'll go to the scores and I'll explain why I have rated this the way that I have. I am giving ease of build a 4. Yes, there was a part missing from this that doesn't change the construction. Um, it's not quite worthy of a 5. I did have to think about it a little bit more than I would like for a starter set, but honestly, it was fine. I will probably end up buying another one of these because, well, it just falls together. It's 21 pieces. That's, that's okay. 
Completeness is three, partly because of the missing headlight. I did have to take a point off for that. And of course, the ridiculous number of paints that it suggests and the whole number five, number 40 debacle. Uh, I can't give this any higher than a three. I think I'm already being a bit generous. But they have actually told you the colours you need, which is better than some. But yeah, three is about as good as I can go. Quality is once again made up of the various elements averaged up. So the kit itself I've given a 4 to because it was absolutely fine. The cement is the same as the Airfix one, so it gets the same score of 2.5. Please don't use it straight from the tube. The brush is a 4 because it did have a bit of a, a loose brush as I showed there. And um, it just... it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's just nothing special. Um, the... Uh, two of the three paints, the black and the interior grey, the 64, they get a four because they're actually not bad paints. They're a little bit thick, but you can thin them down. It's not an issue. And the other one, the body colour, number 40, I'm giving it a three and a half because it was a thick, gloopy mess like paste. So all of that averaged up is three and a half. Presentation is a four. The instructions are very clear. It has a little catalogue with it. has loads of warnings. It's, yeah, a really well presented kit. And enjoyment, which is a bit of a subjective one, three and a half. I will probably buy another one and try and do a good job of it rather than using just the stuff in the kit. Um, yeah, overall, not that bad. This tallies up to give the Citroen 2CV in 143rd scale from Hella a final score of... 7.2 out of 10. Now that's not too bad from what I can see. Obviously it's going to be below the Airfix Firefly. In fact, we can see the leaderboard thus far on screen now. However, um, yeah, I, I don't think you'd be too disappointed if this was your first kit. If you like cars, then obviously um, you're probably going to enjoy it more than the tank. But it gives a good indication as to what scale modelling is like without it being too easy or too difficult. The paints definitely go a long way towards helping the score of this one and it, well, it just goes to show what the airfix result would have been if it had paints that weren't total garbage. But um, yeah, overall, not too bad. One final, final point to make on this video is the audio quality. My microphone keeps playing up, uh, lights are flashing that don't normally flash and things have clearly gone wrong, but I'm a bit short for time so I didn't really get a chance to re-record or sort this out beforehand. Hopefully sorted by the next video, which if you are watching this after release may in fact be available in the playlist of the build series. So that is two down, two to go. Join again if you can, like, subscribe, obey the algorithm, all of that jazz and let me know if you have built this or a similar starter set from Hella and what I think. What I think? What you think? Tell me what I think of your kit. Just send me um, an email, I guess, of your kit and I'll tell you if I think it's rubbish or not. I'm not going to do that, but you can still send it to me anyway. And bye.